Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. Franklin County Sheriff's officers and Texas Rangers are investigating the circumstances surrounding the body of a 23-year-old man found near the porch, the front porch of a residence in Franklin County on County Road Southwest 4430. He died of an apparent gunshot wound, according to Franklin County Sheriff Ricky Jones. The body of the deceased has been transported to Southwest Institute of Forensic Science in Dallas for an autopsy. No names are being released at this time, and the investigation is ongoing. Hopkins County Sheriff's Office Silver Springs Police Department SWAT team executed a felony arrest at 610 Houston Street. Jeremy Lynn Barnett, age 40, of Arkansas, had escaped from the McGehee Police Department in that state. He was living at the residence also occupied by Monique DeVries, age 35, of Silver Springs. During the arrest of Barnett, in plain view on a nightstand in the bedroom was a prescription pill bottle containing several pills later identified as a controlled substance penalty group 3, weighing approximately 20 grams. DeVries is in Hopkins County Jail, charged with possession of a controlled substance under 28 grams in a drug-free zone. She's being held on a $25,000 bond. Barnett is being held for Arkansas authorities without bail. DeVries had been on probation in Arkansas through last year. Morris Lee Tony, age 53, was scheduled for a bench trial Friday afternoon in 8th Judicial District Court in Hopkins County. Instead, he will be entering a six to nine month substance abuse facility. The facility is a lockdown facility for rehabilitation. Tony, who violated his probation, which was set in 2014, was to be tried on two counts of possession of controlled substance penalty group one under 200 grams, one count of tamper, fabricate physical evidence with intent to impair, and possession of a controlled substance penalty group one under one gram. Brian Tolliver Ford broke ground for their new $4 million plus facilities to be built at 1040 Yilmer Street. The new showroom and service repair area will replace the structure destroyed by fire in an early morning three alarm blaze in January of this year. The January fire destroyed the service department and did at least 80 percent damage to the showroom and office area. It was considered a total loss. At the time, Fire Chief Eric Hill said all city fire stations and five rural volunteer fire departments had responded when the fire was reported in the early morning hours. Approximately 35 firemen were involved in fighting the blaze. When firemen first arrived, the blaze was at least 30 minutes to an hour old, forcing a defensive stance for the first five firemen who responded. Explosives or explosions in the service area caused by gas tanks on autos and other flammable materials created even more difficulty for those who responded. Determined to remain in Silver Springs following Community Support Express, Brian Tolliver Ford Lincoln relocated to the old Gober Merrill Building located on South Broadway and will remain in that facility until their new facility has been built. The Hopkins County Fall Festival is so big it takes two weekends. So looking ahead to next weekend, October 21st and 22nd, we're going to find out about two events that are annual events with Johanna Hicks. Good morning, Johanna. Good morning. Hi. Tell us about your Fall Festival events. Okay. Well, I actually have two events and a lot of people confuse them. So I'm going to set the record straight this morning. Um, one of them is the Creative Arts Contest. It was formerly known as the household arts contest okay. but it's the creative arts contest and this is where um, residents of Hopkins County can enter items for judging it can be baked goods um, I'm, I, if I try to list all the categories I'm sure I'll leave something out art photography uh, clothing crafts woodworking horticulture uh, we have a division for scrapbooks um, I think I already said baked goods, canned goods, okay. uh, decorated cakes. Anyway, whatever our Hopkins County residents have that they've made, we will find a spot for it. <laughs> right. And do they, these things have to be made within a certain time frame? Yes. Um, they, they should have been made within the past year. Um, so September 2015 through October uh, of this year. And the items may be entered on Thursday and Friday, October 20th and 21st. Um, on that Thursday, we have to wait until the students are out of school. Um, so they can enter their items from 4 to 6 on Thursday the 
uh, 20th or on Friday morning, the 21st from 7.30 to 9.30. Um, if those times don't work, people can bring their items to my office and we will get them registered there. I just ask that they don't bring really heavy, large, or fragile items to my office because I will be transporting them and I don't want to have sure. to worry about you know dropping something or breaking something. But if it's smaller items, I'll be glad to transport those to the high school. And Tell us where your office is. Okay, we are located at 1200 West Houston Street in Sulphur Springs. Uh, now, the regular registration will take place at the High School Conference Center. Okay. And that is um, kind of behind the cafeteria. And then they will be judged the morning of October 21st. And then they'll be on display to the public uh, sometime after lunch that day. Um, and we really invite everyone to come by and look at all the wonderful entries. Last year we had about 300 entries and it, wow. it is an amazing sight to see. Uh, so they'll be on display until 5 o'clock on Friday. And then they'll also be on display starting at 9 a.m. on the 22nd of October. And through about 1.30. At 1.30, we will take pictures of the best of show winners. Okay. Um, and if they have a purple rosette on their entry, that means they were a best of show. Okay. And we'll take pictures at 1.30, and then they can take their items home. Okay. And we did not say that you represent the AgriLife Extension Office. We just say Extension <laughs> Office, but yes, it has a longer yes. name than That's that. That's right. It's Texas A&M AgriLife Extension okay. Service, so it is a rather lengthy name. <laughs> and we are gathering new listeners and viewers all the time, so we have to maybe tell them uh, things that we formerly took for granted, so Great. I need to remember to do that. Now, that is the creative arts contest yes but then you have another event yes we have the arts and crafts show and this is for people it doesn't have to just be hopkins county folks it can be anybody actually we do have some out of state folks that are coming and this is handmade items that they are selling uh it we don't take any commercially made items this is all handcrafted a lot of our people are um, retired and they just have hobbies that you know they may do woodworking or or crocheting art um, whatever they may do and they come and they sell their items okay. very unique things I have a, a, several new vendors this year that I'm excited to see their items as well as some of our faithful returning vendors I always enjoy the handmade cards the greeting cards mm -hmm. and I've already told the lady that I'm going to be her first customer <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but they are beautiful beautiful things and actually I do still have two single spaces inside that are still available if anyone has items that they make and would like to sell them uh, they can contact me at 903-885-3443 and I will be glad to get them the application um, the outside spaces under the covered walkway are full. We have a couple of uh, vendors that are in front of the gym on the grassy area. So it's filling up nicely, but I did want to mention that we do still have a couple of single spaces available for rent. Uh, the rent is very, very reasonable, um, and it's mainly just to help cover expenses. Sure. Um, so we're, um, we're not in this to make money. It's, it's a wonderful event. And I know that without the Arts and Crafts show, um, um, fall Festival wouldn't be nearly as much fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's the one, there's about two different things that I have to go to. If I have a Fall Festival year that I have to be, just be very brief and hit a couple of things, this is the one I always go to, Arts and Crafts Show. And you'll just see all kinds of things and, and just meander through all the display area. That's right. And, and it's nice because the Creative Arts Contest and the Arts and Crafts Show are in the same building, not necessarily in the same area of the building, but they're side by side, and so it's very easy to go and look at the Arts and Crafts Show and then go to the conference center of the high school and visit the Creative Arts Contest. And if you love buying things for your home decor or gifts or whatever, especially it's just before Christmas time now, mm -hmm. it's perfect. 
perfect for that. That's right. And I don't think I told the the times for the arts and crafts show. So let me let me uh, tell your listeners that the arts and crafts show will take place on Friday, October twenty first from ten to five, and then on Saturday the twenty second from nine to four. So a lot of time to to go in and and look around you'll still have time to go eat stew and then come back for the arts and crafts show and it's just a really fun thing and actually some of my vendors um, plan to go and get a bowl of stew Um, but they enjoy it they enjoy meeting people seeing people so we just invite everyone to come out and support these two events of fall festival and it is a hopkins county tradition that is correct (laughs) going on for 40 something years yeah I think 47 this year. I think so. Um, thank you for doing all that you do in our community. And um, after Fall Festival, maybe you'll come back and tell us about your next round of events planned through the AgriLife Extension Office. I would love to because we do have a very good event coming up in November called Earth Kind Living Expo. Okay. And so I'd love to tell your listeners about that. So okay, I will be back. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Johanna, for thank being here you. today. More construction has recently been started near the square. The parking lot on Main Street on the side of the police station next to the new Tesla car chargers is what they're working on. There's no known finish date, but if you normally park there, a new parking spot for the time being is a good idea. This has been Elijah delivering your KSST News. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.